Fossil fuels dominated the world and the history for the last hundred years. It's time for a new clean energy transition. Is hydrogen the it factor that we're looking for? Let's find out. Clean hydrogen is touted to be the game changer of the future. It gives a promise of delivering good, paying, clean energy jobs and realizing a net zero economy by 2050. And that's what we need for the vision 2040 that we're living through right now. What is in it for Oman and how will our spending power save the planet? This is The Hydrogen Story, where we talk about the biggest energy transition in history. This episode is in support of the Green Hydrogen Summit, which is on December the 5th to the 7th, 2022 at the OCCI. My guest today is Mr. Asami Shibani, the VP of Sustainability in ASEAD. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the invitation. Good. Let's get straight into the questions. The hydrogen economy has become the energy and the world's uh, favorite buzzword. But what exactly is hydrogen? What exactly is this economy is going to bring in? And why are we focusing on hydrogen? So hydrogen is mainly one of the uh, the new fuel actually arise in the market where it can subsidize the fossil, current fossil fuel. Uh, it's safer. Uh, it's uh, more uh, or more uh, energy intense and less uh, harmonizing for the environment. Environment means mean that it doesn't emit same CO two normal fossil fuel. That's why it become more attractive, uh, more doable to do. Uh, and that's why becoming uh, the, the next uh, fuel fuel use. Uh, why is it the, the buzzword or the more most likely attractive for the businesses? Mainly because it's uh, the production of it, um, uh, the availability because everyone around the world can create or develop their own hydrogen because it's coming from separation of uh, water and that will become easy accessible comparing to fossil fuel where only few countries which is blessed by that uh, having uh, the fossil fuel in their country. Okay, fuel. Please explain hydrogen as a fuel to us. Hydrogen as a fuel is, a, is an energy carrier so whenever it's been released in, a, in a, an engine or in a fossil fuel, it, is, it gives you that energy that can move. Um, uh, it's not high intention, intensity, same as the fossil fuel. It's less intention. However, uh, uh, businesses or mobility, for example, they compensate that one by having a bigger sizes for shipping exactly, they give bigger size of vehicles. Uh, uh, in, the, in the vehicles, uh, it gives you more mileage, less uh, emissions, so that bit compensated differently than the fossil fuel. So it's towards the green solution in helping the climate and helping Earth and everything Absolutely. like that. Okay, um, what countries are blessed? You mentioned early on countries are blessed with being able to produce hydrogen. What countries are they in the world and is Oman part of them? The key uh, source of hydrogen production is wind and solar and any country will have uh, enough of hydrogen, uh, have, have uh, wind and solar, they're becoming very attractive, particularly when they will be able to produce around the clock uh, uh, hydrogen. What that means, that means if in the daytime we're using uh, solar to make the hydrogen production, and then at night you use the wind to continue making that hydrogen production, that lower your cost as low as possible, uh, where not many countries around the world have both wind and solar. And Oman actually is blessed by having wind and solar in some particular areas in Oman where they can produce hydrogen around the clock, where, where they bring the cost as low as possible. What's Oman's competition in this level? Uh, uh, Countries-wise, yeah. uh, you compare to Namibia, compare to uh, Chile, some part of Chile, uh, some part of Morocco, some part of Morocco, and all these are competing with, with their man in terms of that of wind and solar. What's the edge? What can give us the edge over these competitions? Uh, uh, the edge is we can lower the cost of hydrogen production at below two dollars, and that's the competition, that's the okay. challenge. I'll come back on that two dollar thing. You mentioned fuel abundance with hydrogen uh, feasibility. Why wasn't it used a very long time ago? Why actually, are we coming into it now? Actually, hydrogen was in the business for a long time ago, uh, but it's used mainly in the, with NASA for the aircraft going to space. We use it because it's a cleaner fuel, and the amount of fuel they needed is very huge. Uh, so they needed a, a cleaner fuel that can be burned, and but again, it's a cleaner, will not um, uh, pollute the environment, particularly mm -hmm. talking about cleaner space. So hydrogen was, was there for NASA to be used in the past. Uh, now, uh, but it was very expensive at that time. Now the cost of hydrogen 
uh, fossil fuel or, or hydrogen fuel cells becoming cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and then will go cheaper even in 2030 uh, and that were becoming attractive for businesses and smaller businesses or businesses that can do a mobility to adopt the technology and can use it. Even the refiners, the refineries around the world have been producing hydrogen as a, a, for their operation for many years um, and then uh, they never thought that it can be uh, used as a fuel but where some of them are used it as a fuel to burn it but again with a control mechanism. Uh, however, now it's becoming very attractive because of the cost of uh, use and becoming a very attractive uh, replacement for fossil fuel. Uh, what makes hydrogen expensive in this conversation you're talking about? Is it the, the you were saying some, you use some certain words, but what is it that makes hydrogen expensive right now? Is the production, is the separation between, the separation of water from uh, H2O, the hydrogen and the oxygen, the separation, the electrolysis de de development, uh, those machines are designed in a different uh, technology that be, and they don't have the high efficiency mm -hmm. which makes it very expensive. And that there is a lot of R&D, how to increase the efficiency, how to lower the cost. With that development, they will be able to reduce the hydrogen cost in the future. Um, so with its expensiveness, that means scalability is the issue. Is that another problem that hydrogen is facing? Yes, scalability, when, we, when you want to produce massive production, you yeah. need a, a 24 hours production as well. Not many countries or not many uh, businesses have that energy uh, saving where you can use per hydrogen production. Now people talking, combining more than one renewable energy that can be uh, yeah. compensate uh, the, the, the darkness of the night, for example. Mm by using oil water reservoir, for example, or by using hydro mix, uh, any power to X, where they always say any power that converts to energy, and that will become more attractive, and that increase um, the production of hydrogen and lower the cost as well. Um, I got so into what you were saying that I actually lost track because I have so many questions in mind. You said $2. Per, what is the cost right now to get the hydrogen? Well, the, the, now the cost, uh, there is not a green hydrogen available. There's few uh, com countries around the world, actually, or com companies around the world who are selling you ha green hydrogen. The available now is a blue hydrogen, and that also costs competitive, between $5. But the hydrogen, the green, or the different type of hydrogen, stand between f uh, 4 to $6 that only production, and then you add up more few dollars uh, on top of that for conversion to different ammonia or methanol, and then you're adding more dollars for transportation it. Okay, you went too scientific. Can we put an example next to it? Oil, let's say in Saudi Arabia, is $4 per barrel to get out. I, I'm not sure what it is over here. I'm sure people are gonna look at the same way with the hydrogen to extract until it is about to get out. What is the cost right now? Well, there is no standard. That's why they call you use a, a word, a terminology called levelized cost of hydrogen production. Okay. And that where we say is we, well, you need to start from somewhere, you put a dollar value for it, and then with the development of technology where you see um, the cost of hydrogen becoming more economical. And that's why we say is, uh, there is no one factor. But there is a little additionality where it, where um, you pay, uh, for money, additional money for storage, if you can produce bigger quantity, you still pay money for conversion, either ammonia or methanol or liquid organic carrier. So whatever methodology you use, then you pay additional money for uh, shipping and yes. terminal operation. All these extra costs. Extra costs, yes. and then at the end, you also pay money at the receiving port where you convert it back to hydrogen, and okay. then you do it. So we can see how it's expensive, actually. What do we want it to be at right now? So the best way you can do it, the lower, the bet, lower cost of production can be, uh, the more we make add value chain throughout the businesses. Yes. Uh, and then we That's say way. Uh, that way. And actually, most of the contracts uh, or the trading of hydrogen is not like trading of fossil fuel or uh, gas or oil, where you see a fluctuation price mm. coming up and down. Mm. It's like one contract lasts for 20 years, mm. uh, and then 20 years so is a fixed price. Yes. When you fix the price for you, you cannot change it. You don't, you don't expect the traders to change for you. So you will not see is like a neck to neck to oil and gas where you see prices up and down or scalability turns down. Because you, 
uh, all the traders, all the importers of hydrogen, they need a sustainable source of hydrogen that can sustain their, port, their businesses and operations. Okay, uh, I can see in the future with humans being resilient that they will be able to create hydrogen at home and be creating their own energy that will consistently be as free as possible or as efficient as possible. This might cause a problem with the establishment and the monopolies, so I don't see how the uh, freedom of using hydrogen can come in. It's just in the past there was a scare about hydrogen, there was the Hindenburg and it straight away burnt. So how do we know that hydrogen is not dangerous to us? Well, actually, there's a lot of study. Like it's like fossil fuel. In the beginning, when the way you was a fossil fuel, when the LNG came into the picture, everyone says LNG gas was a dangerous okay. to stop it there. But there's a lot of research, a lot of t technology, a lot of development in the LNG sector have developed where they ease up a little bit more on the safety of it. And the same thing with the hydrogen. Okay. So it's just how human nature works in history exactly. and we will be able to adapt and clean it exactly. up. Okay, last question for this section. You mentioned colors of hydrogen, you mentioned green and blue. What are these colors? This is colors depends on the, how you produce hydrogen. It's mainly a hydrogen itself to have no color by itself. Mm -hmm. But um, the colors define the way the hydrogen produce. So uh, the blue hydrogen produced from fossil fuel uh, and capturing the, uh, the CO2 while the green hydrogen is mainly pure produced from renewable energy and that's why I call it green. So there's two colors? There is a purple uh, or okay. pink we use from renewable uh, from uh, uh, radiation. So there's for, a whole so rainbow nuclear. spectrum. Yes, exactly. Right. On that note and the spectrum, please stay with us and we'll come back right after this break. We play. You listen. You talk. We listen. You got something to say? We, we want to hear it. 95.4 in Musket. And 91 in Salala. Music, news, views, and everything in between. TFM. TFM. Let's talk. Welcome back to the Hydrogen Story. This episode is in support of the Green Hydrogen Summit, which is on December the 5th and 7th, 2022 at the OCCI. With me is the VP of Sustainability in ASEAD, Mr. Asama Shibani. Welcome and thank you for your previous questions and answers, which are brilliant. We are moving on to uh, more questions. How does hydrogen, how much energy can we get from hydrogen right now compared to fossil fuels? Well, let me give you an example. Uh, that's the that exemplify uh, the value. You need one kilogram of hydrogen can gives you 100 kilometers in a normal uh, car. Mm. So, and then you will need seven kilograms in a vehicles uh, of hydrogen that can take you 700 kilometers and that gives you more length of that. Yeah. So that's the school of thought. That's actually one of the calculations done. It's a nice comparison divide. that we can see how far the cars goes because people know with fuel where it is that yeah. they can go. Now, the challenge there that the hydrogen storage, it have to be at high pressure bar. We're talking about 350, sometimes you go even 700. So the example I gave you, it's a 350 bars. So it's mean very condensed, so you need uh, a, a very well-designed fuel tank or the kind of store mm. hydrogen. Yeah, and protect people from the high pressure if it does decide to subside or explode or anything. The methodology that currently used for say, storing tanks uh, storing hydrogen is more advanced comparing uh, 20, 50, 30 years ago. And that's why they are much confident that they can store hydrogen in a type 4 vessels or type 4 cylinders. What is this type 4? It's, um, it's a combination between a uh, fiber and stainless steel where okay. you combine so together. So the technology is towards that. Which is better, electrical or hydrogen? Actually, there is much better on both of them. Uh -huh. There is, uh, they call it FCEV, fuel cell electrical vehicles where you use both technology. Okay. So that gives you more. So it's money. like my hybrid car using oil and uh, petrol and uh, electricity. Correct. In this case, it's hydrogen and electricity. Correct. Do they exist? Yes, they are. They are my car manufacturer actually making that because they gives you more durability, give, becoming more cost effective, and then storage, store uh, a, a smaller quantity of hydrogen that can give the energy that can give the life you more. Um, since I think 2015, I've been slowly getting snippets of hydrogen, specifically in Germany. How are countries adopting, uh, adopting this hydrogen technology and where have countries reached so far that have impressed you? Well, I think um, uh, you're talking about the European Union where 
uh, they are moving forward for replacing the current fossil fuel with the hydrogen. Mm -hmm. So they have uh, strategies and policies and everything that drive this tr energy transition towards hydrogen. Um, uh, maybe Germany is leading, uh, is one of the leading companies who are actually driving this movement, but there are actually other countries where already in practice they're using uh, hydrogen boats, for example, tugboats, uh, and, and many, other, including uh, vehicles or heavy vehicles, you can say, not commercialized or small vehicles, mm -hmm. but the mainly heavy, duty, uh, heavy vehicles. duty vehicles like trucks and heavy trucks. I did read that hydrogen will be used on the heavy duty stuff compared to uh, battery cells and electricity used for the uh, light vehicles. Why? Because it's more cost effective and well, particularly where you have uh, a storage tanks, and then you need uh, these heavy trucks travel for longer distance. The electrical would be difficult for it to get charged. However, the hydrogen would be able to charge the battery while it's moving on. So it's becoming, give you a longer distance and then becoming no need to charge it. Just fill up, with, fill up with hydrogen and just move on without charging. So with this charging, and if we're talking vehicles, I mean, you need filling stations. You need uh, to be able to have support for it in places that go by. Will it just be a matter of changing the oil and the petrol to hydrogen or is it opening up new filling stations and new stars and new technologies? Uh, well, the trend we see that uh, they are require special hydrogen station uh, where because it's a uh, safety fit is uh, uh, at a high pressure, higher bar. So it's not like normal mm. uh, filling station where you do. So the safety is becoming a uh, given more attention in the hydrogen filling station. However, yeah, it's, it takes five minutes to fill in. It's like a normal vehicle. Okay. It doesn't make you need a lot of time or charging it with, a, Which takes with a electrical while trucks a while. Yeah. Okay. Let me go back to Germany and Europe setting up the regulations. Are they the trailblazers and pioneers of creating regulations for hydrogen that the rest of the world can copy, adapt and slightly change and tweak for their countries? Or is every country going to have their own hydrogen uh, regulations and is it that susceptible and volatile. Correct. Uh, first of all, we're coming back on the, the colors of hydrogen. I think yes. the world need to unify on how what, uh, what type of hydrogen is good for the environment that can be used. I think most of the world have agreed that uh, the green uh, hydrogen is the one that we need to stick on that is particularly they produced. call it green because? It's produced from renewable energy. That means there is no carbon dioxide or anything? No carbon, no any carbon capture, no whatever it is. And blue is just one level less? Uh, blue okay. is mainly produced from fossil fuel, however, with a carbon capture. Okay. And there is a gray, which is without carbon capture. And you use the new word there, carbon capture, okay. which we'll come to in later episodes yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, so you're saying about the colors. Yeah, so uh, mainly whatever colors, I think the hydrogen. However, in order to certify this, so they, they establish another side business where certifying the hydrogen produced. So for every uh, kilograms of hydrogen, there is a certification, or for every hydrogen produced, there is a certification how exactly this hydrogen be produced so they can sell it uh, or be traded in the European Union. However, uh, because of European Union, they focus not only the production of the hydrogen, but also the decarbonizing of the world, where they need to have it uh, from a, renew a reliable or renewable source out of it. While you see other, other countries where they don't put much restriction, for example, Asian countries, uh, Japan, they have a hydrogen produced from coal uh, gasification, mm. which is... Uh, black hydrogen. Uh, it, well, Grey hydrogen. It's a, it's a molly black hydrogen or whatever the color is, but again... Just from so the audience Kong, can start understanding. The yeah. more it's mixed with fossil fuel, the darker the color is. Correct. Yeah. So uh, uh, the hydrogen produced from ga coal gasification still can be used as a hydrogen, uh, but again, the, uh, the, the certification for that cannot be utilized the same as European oil. Please explain certification. The certification is very important towards the regulation? If you want the dollar price, because the hydrogen has a, a dollar value, so if it is greener, because it's, mm. it's the, the production of it is very troublesome and require technology and everything, that's why the cost and it's safer for environment. While other hydrogen is readily available, like uh, the blue hydrogen is readily available now, we can get it from any refineries and with a bigger quantity or the quantity one, uh, is available and it's cheaper comparing to the green energy where it's required renewable energy produced for ex extended 24 hours uh, development so that become add complexity to the production rather than easier complex production. Where is this blue hydrogen used if it's available in abundance right now? Uh, uh, mainly it's used in the refineries 
uh, as a part of it. However, some of the businesses still use the hydrogen for uh, 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 their uh, uh, desulfurization businesses within the refineries. Okay, so hydrogen is used because why? They, they, this is towards, they move towards decarbonization to help out? Yeah. Or is it because they found it was somehow cheaper and more efficient to use? No, actually hydrogen is becoming uh, um, an energy vector. We can give you energy, but without affecting the environment. That's one of Vector, uh, yeah. what's that word? Vector is mean the energy carriers carry the energy and gives you energy in terms of you and the operation you're doing. Speaking of the word carrier, I read that hydrogen, uh, will hydrogen become the bulk energy carrier of the future or the fuel of the future? What is the difference? Well, uh, the fuel of the future, any, uh, hydrogen you can mix it with any uh, other substance like for example nitrogen can make you ammonia or if you mix it with CO2 uh, it can make you methanol. Hello chemistry students in the periodic table, can you say that again? <laughs> <laughs> if you mix it hydrogen with uh, uh, nitrogen it gives you ammonia and then classified as a green ammonia has made it also green. Uh, if you mix it with CO2 then it gives you methanol and the methanol also can be classified as green if the CO2 also make it from biomass as well. Okay. In all of this, you mentioned earlier carbon capture. So if carbon is not released and it's green hydrogen, if carbon is released, what is carbon capture? Uh, carbon capture is mean whatever you, you yeah, if uh, the hydrogen is produced through fossil fuel, is mean the long chain of hydrocarbon, uh, then you break the chain, you will get the, the CO2, CO2 out of that. You need to capture that CO2 in some way or somehow, a different technology even in the cylinders or uh, some people actually uh, put it in a, in a cylinders way, they put it, release it in the, in the oil reservoir or all the oil the mining. Once you capture that, then you qualify as a blue hydrogen. If you don't capture that, your hydrogen will qualify for a gray hydrogen. Okay, so this carbon capture is definitely a topic that we're going to talk about in the future. What sectors, we've mentioned heavy duty cars, you mentioned boats and ships, what other sectors will hydrogen, does hydrogen impact and will it impact and how can SMEs and entrepreneurs get into this economy? One of the key sectors which is we're going to have, have hydrogen produced or have benefit from hydrogen is a steel manufacturing. Uh, steel manufacturing is heavy intense where you burn uh, natural fossil fuel, natural gas, where you convert, you, you smelt and you melt all the uh, iron so you make that, that uh, iron you needed for the future. Mm. Uh, however, replacing the current fossil fuel by hydrogen uh, it gives you a cleaner fuel that you use to burn and then with that qualify also the steel as a green hydrogen. It's, so it's, steel is one sector, steel but it's a, big money for big people. So, and actually it's become more attractive now because of, uh, uh, from 2024, mm. all the car manufacturing, this is a new regulation from EU, all the car manufacturing, manufacturer post 2024 have to be manufactured through green technology. Green technology is a less of fossil fuel. Okay, uh, how can SMEs and entrepreneurs and inventors find a way to get into this? What, would, what's, what are your words to people here in Oman so that we can be at the edge, the okay. pioneers and trailblazers? The value chain of hydrogen is so vast. Very, very vast and you have to look for many, many areas. Uh, uh, you can start with uh, the hydrogen production itself, it's become as a big difficult, but again, look into supplying solar panels, uh, electrolyzer, even uh, the, the methodology, uh, the me metals used, design those uh, technologies uh, are becoming very attractive. Actually, transporting it? Trans transporting is a bit uh, regulated because of the required types of vessels we do. Filling stations? Uh, filling station is also uh, not for uh, a small SME, but again, well technological companies were actually driving this business. But again, um, uh, all the research for people who are actually doing research on the electrolyzers can be uh, very good. Uh, hydrogen attractive. tutors, I can see the electrolyzers, chemical teachers, yep, yes, chemistry uh, teachers moving on to hydrogen. Uh, well, it's a, it's a big economy. Look into yeah. the project actually already announced in Oman. Uh, if you can capture a smaller percentage for that in Oman, uh, there definitely there is a lot of value chain that we can get to it. Okay, on the word value chain, you've offered a lot of value over here. I'm sure people have to rewind this episode to get every deep impact, impactful word that you mentioned. So I'm going to end with a few questions, with one question over right now. 
It's the year 2050. How well do you think you have done so far? Well, enabling to change from current fossil fuel and convincing people to go to a green or clean fuel, this is will pay off in 2050, okay? Because that will help to decarbonize the world, to make work world even uh, with the less CO2 emission, that will do. We want to make the world is a better for our, at that time, maybe grandchildren. Yeah. Uh, but again, if you don't contribute now, don't start act now, then you will not have a cleaner or greener future in the future. So 2050, cleaner, greener, less carbon happening right now. Our question right now, which hopefully we answered, is hydrogen hope or hype? This is the Hydrogen Story in support of the Green Hydrogen Summit on December the 5th and 7th at the OCCCI. My guest has been Mr. Asama Shibani, the VP of Sustainability at Asiad. My name is Fahmi Ma'wali. Till the next Hydrogen Story. See you then.